Okay, so we're going to now move to the chromatin talk of this session. So we're going to hear um, from um, Zhuan Ying Li, and she's going to talk about the Saga complex, a chromatin modifying complex, and its role in gene expression in Drosophila development. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Xuan Ying Li. I'm a graduate student from Star Wars Institute, and I'm glad. Um, have the chance to talk about my thesis project about Saga. So in your carry out, uh, the DNA is highly condensed uh, and uh, wrapped around the histones to, comb the, uh, to form the chromatin. And uh, the histones have a variety of post-translational modification which regulate the transcription and some modifications are active, while uh, some are repressive. Uh, today, I will talk, today, I will talk about the enzyme GCN5, isolate H3, and nonstop remove the UB creatine from UBH2B. So the histone modification are uh, 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 catalyzed by histone modifying enzymes, and those enzymes are often integrated into larger complex, such as switch sniff and saga. So saga is a two megadalton complex, 10 times of the size of a nucleosome. And saga is a complementing modifying complex. Uh, it has four different modules. The first is a transcription activator interaction module, which recruits the whole saga to chromatin. And the second one is Tata binding protein interaction module, which has several TBP uh, associated factors. And uh, there are two enzymatic modules. The first one is acetotransferase module, which acetylate H3, and the second one is the ubiquitinase module, which removed the ubiquitin from UBH2B. And in my study, I found genes essential for oogenesis require the HAT module, but not the DAM module. And the DAM module is essential for a subset of genes expressed during embryogenesis. And from the whole genome analysis, we found saga occupy genes include both the head module and the DAM module. However, the DAM module itself can bind to genes independent of saga. So I will talk about, uh, first uh, uh, talk about the part one. So to address the role of saga in early development, I uh, made germline clone females to knock out the different subunit from the head module and the DAM module. So I knock out ADA2B from the head module and I take in seven and non-stop from the DAM module. So first I check the oogenesis and I found loss of ADA2B from the head module block oogenesis. So um, from the Debbie staining, you can see those dying cells in the ADA2B germline clone females ovary, and those females cannot produce egg. However, uh, loss of itain 7 or nonstop from the DAM module do not block oogenesis, and those germline clone females can still produce egg. And the, from the um, staining of uh, uh, wasa, which is red, and the uh, uh, staphen, which is green. You can see there's uh, the wasa and the staphen still express in the germline clone females ovary, and they are properly localized. So from from those data, uh, those data suggest that the genes essential for oogenesis require the head module, but not the dam module. So next. 
I test whether the dump module is required for embryogenesis. So I stand even skip and twist in early, gem in early embryos. And from the even skip standing, I found the early pattern AP and DV pattern still forms in the I think seven mutant embryos and the non-stop mutant embryos. And the early zygotic gene twist still expressed in the mutant embryos suggests that at least some of the uh, zygotic gene uh, do not require the dub module. However, I do find uh, some uh, defect in the mutant embryos. So at the cellularization stage, you can see, although the majority of the nuclei migrate to the surface of the embryos, there are many mislocalized nuclei under the surface. And the next to see which gene may cause, cause this defect, I found a published paper shows that knockdown gene Kugelkren gave the similar phenotype of those mislocalized nuclei here. And I, I also found um, in this in knock, knockdown Kugelkren the, gave the misshapen nuclei compared to the Y, compared to the y type. And I, I also found mislocalized, uh, uh, misshapen nuclei in I think seven mutant embryos, which is uh, yellow shows here. So this, those data suggest that Kugelkern may be uh, one of the target genes of Saga cause this phenotype. And to see whether Kugelkern is a, a target of Saga, I did chip seek, and based on the chip seek data, you can see Kugelkern is occupied by Saga, so it's, it is a target of Saga. And uh, from the qPCR result, I found uh, actually Kugelkern required the Saga dump module for its full expression. For, so uh, loss of I taking seven from the dump module actually caused uh, downregulated of the Kugelkern. And also uh, for some also for, also for some other early genes, they are also required the Saga dub module for their full expression. However, genes uh, like NOLO and the actin 5 c uh, do not change expression due to loss of i 7 And I observed the same result in my RNC data. In i 7 mutant embryos, uh, many genes change expression due to loss of i 7 However, there are still around 3,000 genes expressed but do not change uh, upon loss of i 7 So far, from the part one, um, I show you that the genes essential for eugenesis require the head module but not the dumb module. And the dumb module is essential for a subset of genes uh, expressed during embryogenesis. And those results uh, raises uh, interesting questions. Is We know the dump module is now required for all the genes expressed. So whether um, is the dump module still bind to the genes that do not require it for expression uh, like this? The dump module still bind to the saga target as a part of saga, all the dub module do not bind to them because those genes do not require the dub module. So to, to answer these questions, I use genome-wide analysis chip seek to identify the binding site of different saga modules. I use SPT3 from the interaction module, ADA2B from the head module, and SCF11 from the dub module to do the chip seek. And here shows some examples. And I found actually most, uh, most of the saga bounding genes are occupied by the dump module. So here you can see this is the example of the dump, independent, uh, dump dependent genes, LDS, which uh, the expression requires a dump module. So here it shows that the full saga bind to the LDS genes. And the, another example is a CSP, which is 
uh, not depend on the dump module for its full expression. But in the CSP, still the whole uh, saga still bind to the genes. And uh, in genome-wide, compare the uh, ADA2B chip seq and the STF11 chip seq, you can see the majority of saga bind genes are also occupied by the DAM module, although only a small portion of those genes require the DAM module. So this data shows that, um, although the, um, so this data answers the question is the DAM module still bind to Saga target as a part of Saga, although um, not all of those genes require the DAM module. So the uh, last of a few slides I want to focus on the DAM module. So actually some studies already suggest that the DAM module may exist as a free form, so we want to know whether it's true in flies. And you may already notice that although the, most of the uh, saga bonding genes are occupied by the DAM module, but there are still uh, many DAM module bound genes are not occupied by the head module. So the screenshot of the chip seek show, shows that um, besides the saga peaks, which has uh, SCF11, ADA2B, and SPT3 uh, together, there are many um, STF11 only peaks across the genome, suggest that in the Y type fly, there is a free DAM module bind to the chromatin. So now we know the DAM module bind can bind sites uh, independent of Saga, and the Saga normally bind to the promoter and the TSS. So where does the, we want to know where does the free module bind? And we found, uh, actually, compare the binding site, uh, the Saga prefer bind to the TSS, which is now surprised because it's a transcription co-activator. And actually, the free DAM module also prefer bind to the TSS, uh, suggests that the free DAM module may be uh, also act as a co-activator. And the last data shows uh, from the uh, go term analysis um, shows that we want to see whether there's a, a particular group of genes bind by the free DAM module, but actually from the go term analysis, uh, we didn't find any uh, particular group of genes bind by the free DAM module, but not bound by the saga. So um, uh, in summary, from part two, I hope I show you that the saga occupied gene includes the head module and the DAM module, and the DAM module combined to genes independent of saga. And then I w w and this, we will continue to uh, no, uh, learn more about the free DAM module, but since the time, I will skip this, and this is my acknowledgement. And thank you, and I'm happy to answer questions. So can, can you comment on when H2B gets ubiquitolated in, in early embryogenesis and when it's being uh, de ubiquitolated? I'm, I'm sorry, I cannot hear you. Oh, uh, so just with respect to the modification, the ubiquitolation of H2B, is it present in early chromatin and is it being removed? Can, can, uh, is, is it dynamic or is it being established later? Uh, so you say the UBH2B. Yeah. Uh, so UBH2B is very dynamic. Uh, modification, so it's uh, um, so it's not like acetylation or methylation. So it's really dynamic during the transcription. So it's first add and then quickly removed. But over the developmental period that you're looking, it, it's there constantly over the. Um, that one during the development stage, um, the um, it's not clearly shows that which stage has the ubiquitination, which stage. Move, remove. So I, I think it's a, um, it's a consistently during the, with the development the process, it adds and removed. It's dynamic. Yeah. Okay, so let's thank the speaker. Thank you.